This is our 1996 Isuzu Rodeo V6 four-wheel drive and I just finished changing the transmission fluid and putting a transmission filter in it and if you want to know how to do that or just how to add fluid to the stupid thing because there's no underhood dipstick uh, the link will be down below. The next thing it's got to be done is I got to put a starter motor in it. Now this is the second time I've attempted to do this. The first time was about two years ago and of course I was doing it on the road. I just bought a starter motor and I was going to change it. At that point I discovered <laughs> I could not get it out. You had to drop uh, the exhaust, which at this point is so roached, every bolt's going to break off. And I don't know how far back we're going to end up before we finally, probably all the way to the end, a full exhaust system, where you got to lift the motor. And quite frankly, I just didn't have the tools. And I was able to do some some pretty sketchtacular stuff. I actually took the end of the starter motor off, again, hoping I could disassemble it and getting it in in place, disassemble it and get it out. But even then it wouldn't fit out of there. I think I actually hacksawed off a little bit of the aluminum bell housing and it just, it just nothing I could do to get it out of there with the limited tools that I had. So I actually took the, the solenoid apart, uh, kneaded or kneeled over the copper plunger inside and that actually got it working flawlessly for two years but it, it just all of a sudden failed again so now it's time to swap it out but the first thing that's got to be done is I gotta find a way to get it out of the truck without doing the exhaust because I'm just not willing to do the exhaust on this thing huh, I had to stop uh, because all of a sudden I could feel things falling on me we are miles and miles from the fire and this is the kind of crap that is currently dropping out of the sky as we speak <laughs> uh, it's supposed to start raining tomorrow night here is the beastie and uh, this is the wonderful development I just found yep so this is something to keep in mind if you're changing yours you might want to put some lock washers or some low-grade Loctite on it because mine, since I worked on it, has rattled loose. I have one bolt holding it in. This doesn't change anything. It actually was starting just fine. Dan? But I'm going to need a bolt. Dan? Yeah, Buster. The one you up? That's the one I picked up. You won't be able to hear it on the camera, but I can hear it bouncing off the metal roofs. It sounds like rain, except it's pine needles and ash. I am beginning to understand why there are, to the best of my knowledge, no specific how-tos to get this effing starter out of this truck. And the only how-to is actually on a Trooper, an Isuzu Trooper. Same motor, a uh, different body. So this is what we've got. I got that motor mount loose, the rear transmission mounts loose. The motor is lifted up an inch on this side, and this is still all the farther I can get the starter motor out. It is now jamming on the suspension. It is jamming on the exhaust manifold. It is jamming on the oil pan man, uh, the oil pan itself, and the actual starter solenoid is miles from fitting through this hole. I am able to get it far enough down that I can get to that screw and that screw. And I'm going to go look at the replacement starter, but it might be a, a matter. Maybe the nose cones are uh, replaceable. Same starter body, a number of different mounts for different trucks. Maybe I can take it apart. Maybe then it'll work. I don't know. I'm running out of ideas. It's out. That's how I did it. Uh, I ended up taking it apart. Now, it is hell. Um, I, I think there are sports cars with easier units than that. So, what I have done, pulled that one motor mount right there, and lifted one side of the motor, and I gotta be up there an inch and a half. I got her cranked way the hell up. Probably more than I should. That allowed me to get enough room 
to flip the starter itself end for end. I don't know if I needed quite that much room, but I wasn't in a good mood at the time. Anyways, I got enough room. When I managed to flip it in for end, I could get at the bolts. So I took the bolts off of either end and I, I physically dismantled the starter. And by doing so, obviously I made it smaller and I ended up taking it out in two pieces. I'm hoping to put the new one back in, although in a little more controlled fashion with far less um, Latin verbs. It's this is this is one of those things, right? And and you look it up on the internet, and either it's just generic stupid crap, undo the bolt, take it down, or it's sanctimonious uh, advice from SOBs who don't actually own one of these stupid things, or possibly Isuzu is making model changes with every single frickin' year. I actually had lamented the fact that I said, I'm going to take this damn starter apart to get it out of here. Of course, I was worried about how do I get the new one back up in. And I put that out on Facebook just in frustration. And an old old friend of mine, after telling me just to YouTube it, which there are no um, no videos of, of these coming out of a 96 rodeo. A lot of troopers and not a, and not a 96 rodeo. But then there's some guy, and he's like, Oh, you guys are so dumb. All you got to do is put it forward. Take it forward. Take it forward. Yeah, do you see a freaking way to take it forward up there, big boy? No. And you go through his whole thing. Turns out he has a Su Isuzu Amigo. So it's just that kind of crap over and over again. If you got a 95, 6, or 7 rodeo, this is one of the worst effing jobs it is so much more than it should be you're going to need to lift the motor you are need to pull the starter loose from the motor then you're going to need to take the damn starter apart into two pieces and then individually work the pieces out that's what got it out now to get it back in so in taking it apart my original goal was simply to pull the motor body itself right here intact boom take this off that can be done by pulling the two on either side. It would still be attached by this um, you know, electrical connection, but I figured that that would allow it to rotate and then there would be room to slip it up in there. For whatever reason, I got those two bolts out and this, this body right here refused to separate, even after some uh, judicious encouragement and again, some more Latin verbs. So I had to pull the frickin' nose off the thing. Well, that allows all of the gear ratio and everything else to drop out into your face, which is fun, and scatter pieces all over Kingdom coming back, which is the last thing you want to have happen, of course, when you're putting a brand new starter in. So I am going to find a way to put it back in without getting that nose piece off. So here is my starter. This is my brand new one, and you can see that I've already pulled these long bolts right here out of it. That allows this unit to slip up and away and that will be enough room to get it up in there and it doesn't fall apart and everything seems to be holding in there relatively well wish there was a little more grease on it and uh, you know wish the bearing was a little less grumbly but rebuilt starters it'll be just fine and so you can put it back in like that upsides of this pulling it apart this way, the, the, the shit isn't going to fall over your whole world. Downside, it does mean you have to flip this whole freaking thing end to end to get it back up in there. I think I am going to hedge my bets with a little bit of duct tape right here. But I know what you're hearing. I know what you're hearing. I know what you're saying. It's like, oh, you're going to avoid the warranty and they're going to know you've taken it apart. By God, they are. You can see the paint on the bolt there, right? Yeah, turns out it's the same as this. A couple of dabs like that when it's in, warranty is restored. Yeah, I know that's a little shady and underhanded, but you know what? So is the, the way you mounted the damn starter in this truck. So I figure we're all going to be okay when it comes time to meet our respective makers. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go kapoop, take it apart, slip it up in, put the two of them together, bang. Hang this part down, put these back together, like that, flip it all over, and bolt it back up into place. I have been working on this for a few hours after work 
for three days. I hate this truck. There's no point going into it here, but I could do an entire video on exactly why you should never buy an Isuzu Rodeo. Anyways, let's see if I can get it back up in place and restore my warranty. All right, here we go. Even this dang glaze base plate doesn't want to go up in there. You must get it in me, Miss Shine. Words that I won't forget, no. Pick me up, push me down. You build me just to break me. Shattered dirt out of it. Pieces you left on the floor. You took your aim and you gave it your best shot. My pain you gained. Left my heart slain and all alone. Call me insane. Taking it for forever. The problem is this oil sump right here. And to be totally honest, if they'd taken the time to trim any of this flashing off, any of it, I could slip this in, taken apart like that. But they didn't, and I frickin' can't. I don't know if you can see anything or not. You're on your own. But you won't fool me this time. to restore the warranty. Warranty restored. Not that it matters. Because you're never getting it back out again without doing the exact same thing. Oh, and I can point out one other thing I did. I actually used a hacksaw and I cut off this little thing right here. All it was was an additional mount uh, for that heat shroud. And uh, it still has one mount over here. And that was good enough for three years. I forgot I'd done that years ago. Uh, just to get enough room last time to get that apart right there. So that's, that's what I did. Get this project done. Get it all put. Oh, I get that motor back down. And somehow... Try to get them bolts back in the motor mounts. One thing at a time. 
the new starter is past all this crap. 10 pounds of shit in a five pound hat. That's how I did it. So there you go. There's a real honest to God video of swapping the, uh, the starter motor on a 1996 Isuzu Rodeo V6 automatic. Not a, not a theoretical, not a up on a lift and tapity tap, 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 and it falls out in your hand, but an actual honest to God video. It's me and I think one other guy. Uh, we both do it different ways. He said he was able to do it by lifting the motor. I've got the motor up twice as far as what he said he had to, and it wasn't even close. It wasn't even remotely close. Oh, and he pulled this, he pulled this off. You, you should know that uh, I, I can only reach those bolts with the impact with an extension, right? I hammered on those bolts uh, until I broke the socket, and I never, I never managed to crack any of them loose, so yeah there is still the option of pulling this out but i i can tell you right now um unless there just wasn't i didn't think there'd be the room to get it out without it so now you've got you got two ways that you can flounder yourself you've got to remove those bolts somehow with an air impact wrench and uh the grace of god you didn't somehow break them off or well, i suppose you could wave a torch up in there good luck hope you don't set it on fire uh, or you can do what I did, which was to separate the motor from the starter head itself, the solenoid valve, and the gear reduction. And by separating the motor and lifting the motor, you could get them in in two pieces. That, that's the proof right there. No theoreticals. You watched me do it. Here we go. Proof's in the pudding. I am not a fan of this machine. But it has a starter in it.